Hello everyone, welcome back to the channel. And this video is about the skills that you need to be a systems administrator, especially if you are from the help desk support, IT support, any support role, and you wanted to level up your skills and be promoted to a systems admin. I've made a video recently showing the skills that you need as an entry-level IT support role. Now I'm going to show you what you need to learn and what you need to work on if you wanted to. Because I'm also getting comments and requests about this kind of video. What if you have been working in IT support or a support role for a number of years and you want to level up. You don't want to do support role anymore. You wanted to grow into your career and you wanted to become a systems admin. So that's what we're going to be talking about in this video and not just the technical skills but also the mentality and the mindset that you need to have if you become a system admin one day. So currently in my role, I am in the middle of being an IT support and systems admin. I am still doing user support, but I'm, but I'm also doing some systems admin work. So I'm going to share with you the experiences that I have in doing a systems admin role and what I also see and observe from my seniors who have been systems admin for a long time. So if you're interested in this video, please keep on watching and without further ado, let's get started. Also disclaimer, before we talk about the details of today's video, I will be talking more about my experience managing Windows environment because that's my background. I don't have much background about the Linux environment. This is going to be a majority of how to become a Windows systems administrator. Before we move on to the skills needed by systems admin, let's talk about the key differences in skills, tasks, and mindset of an IT support and a systems administrator. So the support role focuses more on helping users with basic troubleshooting, software and hardware, handles day-to-day -day issues, primarily resolving user-reported problems, and tend to be more reactive, focusing on resolving user problems as they come up. While an admin focuses on managing and maintaining the larger IT infrastructure, working on maintaining servers, networks, and ensuring overall system health and security, and they are more proactive, focusing on optimizing, securing, and scaling the entire IT environment. So for the system administrator skills, the first thing you need to learn is deep understanding of operating systems. Of course, when you're in IT, you should already know what an operating system is but if you're a systems admin you need to know the more deeper level and more advanced operating systems and this also includes the server versions and not just the desktop versions because if you are in IT support most likely you will be dealing with Windows 10, Windows 11 desktop but if you're a systems admin you will be working on Windows servers and more on configuring setting up, installing server roles like DNS, DHCP, Active Directory, and such. Also, if you're going to be a systems admin, just keep in mind that you're going to be the escalation point or the tier 3 when it comes to IT support. And you're going to be dealing with more complex problems, not just the Windows desktop version problems but you'd also be handling windows server problems as well so also be prepared that the entry level it or the it support help the support will be coming to you most of the time if they can't solve the issues on their level next of course is active directory and group policy management so most of our user accounts and assets are managed in active directory so you should also have a deeper understanding on active directory what a domain is, what a forest is, and no more advanced concepts. Because when you're in IT support, you will be dealing mostly with user accounts and computer accounts, and mostly resetting passwords, changing membership, adding membership, removing membership. But it's going to be more advanced task for you if you are going to be a systems admin. You will be configuring groups, setting up groups. You will be doing more GPOs, GPO management, creating new GPOs, auditing GPOs if they're still needed, thinking of whatever policy is needed to improve your current system. So a systems admin's responsibility is more on designing and planning for the infrastructure rather than implementing it on to the user and computers. Also, you should be learning more about 
Active Directory Security, what a service account is, implementing service account, implementing policies for your groups and users. So this is really hardening your security for your infrastructure. Next is more advanced networking skills. So if you are in IT support, of course, you should know basic networking skills like what an IP address is, the basic concepts. If you're a systems admin, you should know more advanced concepts, especially with configuring, setting up networking devices. You will be tasked most likely to plan the network infrastructure along with the networking team. And most of the time, they will have you configure the devices if you're doing upgrades or adding more equipment or device to your infrastructure. As a systems admin, you should know how to configure, set up devices like access points, a network switch, a network router, if that's part of your responsibility, and also troubleshoot issues you encounter during the setup or after deployment, for example. Next important skill to have is scripting and automation. Scripting is very important when you are an admin especially if you're managing a lot of servers, devices, of course. You don't want to be doing everything manually, especially if you are doing it repetitively because it is prone to mistakes. So if you are in the Windows environment and managing mostly Windows computers and servers, you should learn PowerShell. PowerShell works on the Windows platform, so this is already a built-in tool for Windows that you can use for scripting and automation. If you have Linux servers and Linux computers in your environment, you can also learn Bash for scripting because that works for the Linux platform. That's just like the PowerShell for Windows, but the tool is Bash. So it's really up to you on what environment you're using when choosing the appropriate automation tools. Also, if you really like to script and you have been using other languages and you really don't want to restrict yourself in one platform, you can use other programming languages like Python, Perl, or Ruby to write your scripts because they are multi-platform. They really don't just work on Windows or just Linux. They can work on every platform. So here are examples of scripts that you can write as a systems administrator. And you can also do this to practice your scripting skills if you want. You can make onboarding and offboarding scripts, scripts for file cleanup, server health checks, and system backups. Next, if you also wanted to be more advanced and more efficient in running all of your scripts and automation, you can also look into learning automation tools, just like Ansible, Puppet, or Chef for infrastructure automation and configuration management. So these are the popular automation tools that can help you implement and test your scripts in your infrastructure. Another very important skill to learn and have is virtualization and cloud computing. Virtualization is really much needed in our infrastructure nowadays. Most likely, if you are a systems admin, you don't want to be managing more hardware resources because they're more costly to maintain compared to just having a hypervisor and managing VMs. Because aside from being cost efficient, it's also easier to upgrade virtual machines than a bare metal or a physical machine. So virtualization is very much part of our IT infrastructure nowadays, no matter how big or small the company is. So it's really important to learn and understand how to create, manage, and troubleshoot virtual machines. Also, since there has been an increase in cloud platforms recently, and we are slowly incorporating them in our infrastructure because it's also cost effective, you should also learn cloud platforms like AWS or Azure or Google Cloud, depending on what your company is using, even just the basic concepts, because maybe later on your company or your management decides to move some of your services or infrastructure into the cloud at least now you have an idea on how to implement that because the systems admin's responsibility is to design and plan for projects just like that when you plan to migrate from physical to you no know, cloud service for example at least you now have an idea on how that works another important skill to learn is backup and disaster recovery Data is very important in a company and a systems admin 
its role is to protect the data and make sure that the data doesn't get corrupted, we don't lose data, and we can still keep on storing more data for our business operations. Just understand the concept on how backup works and how it's implemented in your work and what software you use. There's different software for that. There's Windows Server Backup and the third-party tools like Commvault and Cloud Backup. Also, disaster recovery is very important. Make sure to understand the recovery procedures, including how to restore systems and data after hardware failure or a cyber attack. Make sure there is a plan in place, contingency plan in place, because sometimes even if we are very careful about everything, there are still, you know, disasters that happen. Another important skill to have is security best practices. The patch management is another responsibility of a systems admin, and you should be able to understand how to deploy and automate updates, especially if you're in a Windows environment. There is the monthly Microsoft patches that we do, and they're always released every second Tuesday of the month. So you should be always up to date with the patches. You shouldn't miss a patch, or you shouldn't miss deploying or releasing patches, especially if there is a critical patch in the system. Also, part of security is user access. So you should be able to create policies, appropriate policies for user access, who you should give access to, what the restrictions are, especially for files, folders, and network shares, implementing those policies, and just designing an infrastructure that has a proper user access control. Next skill that you should learn is storage management. So this is knowing how to properly maintain and manage different storage that you use in the company to make sure that the data there is always available and there's backup if something happens and also to be able to keep storing data and not reach the full capacity. So you need to learn about different storage system like SAN or NAS. At work, we are using NetApps and I also learned how to replace the drives. Once a drive goes bad, I also learn how to set it up and configure it and troubleshoot if something happens. Okay, so last but not least is advanced troubleshooting. So as I mentioned earlier, issues will be escalated to you because you are going to be the tier three. So if they can't resolve it on their level, you should be able to solve it or at least guide them on how to resolve the issue. And it's not just solving the symptoms that you should be thinking about. You should be also resolving the root cause of the issue so the issue won't be recurring. So jumping in from an IT support role to a systems admin role is really great for your career growth, but there's also a lot of responsibilities entailed into this role. It's not just higher pay and bigger title but it's also more advanced task and more responsibilities in your hands so before you decide that you want to move into this path just make sure that you're aware of all of the responsibilities and all of the possible stress that might come with it too it's not easy though it feels fulfilling if of course you've done everything that you can also since you are higher on the tier of level of support you are more responsible to what the lower tiers will be doing especially on how they are troubleshooting you should be able to train your subordinates because you are considered a senior in this role and the juniors will be following whatever you're implementing too so you should also think of being a good leader in setting up an example on how to do things because you can't tell your juniors to do this do that if you yourself are not doing it so just also have the mindset and the mentality it's not just the technical skills that will make you a systems admin or it's not just the technical skills that will take you to another role but also your mentality and your mindset as well your mindset will need to grow as well and you should be able to think of a bigger picture and not just one issue one computer or one user as a systems admin you should be able to look into a broader aspect of things and look into all of the different pieces too so it's not just technical skills it's going to be a level up of your soft skills as well so if you think that you are ready to be a systems admin one day and if you think that you can take on the challenges and responsibilities then maybe you can start learning these things that i've mentioned earlier and also practice the mentality my advice is if you are working on an issue, you can start by doing the root cause 
analysis and start to think of digging deeper into what the issue is so that you can stop it from there and prevent it from recurring to another time or another user. So that could be a good start of growing your mentality and your technical skills as well. Okay, so that would be it for today's video. I hope you learned something and if you have any questions, please let me know in the comment section below. Thank you so much for watching and I hope to see you guys in the next one.